In this Rhinoceros video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model flare and scoop details using two different methods, and I'll be using the version 5 beta of Rhinoceros. If you'd like to use the same build, you can download it off of rhino3d.com using your version 4 CD key. The first step is going to be to draw a curve in the top viewport, and I'm going to do that with the curve command and three points. And then I'll select that curve and I'm using my control and tab keys to tab through the viewports without having to minimize them. I'm going to, in the front view, use the gumball by dragging it in the z-axis. Then I'll hold down the control key to turn that into an extrusion object. And you can see it there. If I select the extrusion object and turn on the control points, it only has those three points. It doesn't look like a regular surface. So I'm going to use the explode command to explode that extrusion object into a regular surface. And you can see what the control points look like now. And then I'm going to use the command change degree. Change degree on this surface will allow me to add more points without changing its shape. So in the U direction, it currently has a degree of 2 as shown in the command line. I'm going to change that degree to degree 5 which will give me six points in the U direction. And in the V direction, the green arrow direction here, I'll change it to three, and that'll give me four points. And you can see the resulting geometry there. Now this is important because I want to split this surface by isocurve right here, and I want to have enough geometry to pull it away on this back end without affecting the continuity across my split line. So we'll split using the isocurve option, and shrink equals yes is on. And because shrink equals yes was on, we get the six points in the U direction on this piece of the surface that we split, and we get six points on this piece in the U direction. Now I'm going to go into my front viewport, turn off those control points, and I'm going to draw the border for my scoop detail here. And then I'm going to offset with the offset command. And I'll run that again for the other curve. And this will give me two sets of curves. And I'll select those two sets as well as that piece of the surface, the split surface, and I'll run the project command. And the last time I ran the project command, I had the delete input equals yes option in the command line. So that setting was maintained, and the originals were deleted in this operation as well. And with the curve still selected, I'll run the trim command and I'll remove the portions of the surface in the middle of each set of curves. Now if I select that middle section and turn on the control points, you can see that it believes its control point structure is the same as the original, what it came from. And I want that to be a little bit smaller so it's easier to manipulate, so I'm going to run the command shrink trimmed surface on this middle section and it'll shrink back those control points to the smallest rectangular boundary. And then I'll select that last row, and using the gumball manipulator, I'll drag it back in the y-axis, and maybe I'll do the same for that second row. And this is just to create a little bit of a gap with those areas that we just trimmed out. And this will give us some space to work with for defining the shape of our scoop. We'll go into the Surface tab here and run Blend Surface. Select our first edge, Enter, second edge, Enter. And I'm going to zoom in on this area right here where it borders the adjacent part of our split surface. And you can see that it doesn't line up perfectly straight. If I toggle off the preview here, you can kind of see that gap and I'm going to alter the angle of these handles by mousing over that middle point, 
holding down the Alt key and left clicking. And now I can release my finger off of the Alt key and I can change the angle of this handle. So I have my end object snaps on. So I can just mouse over the opposite end point and left click. And I'll do the same thing for this other handle here. Hold down Alt, click, and end snap. Click again. And that will straighten that out. And if I look at the other end, it's got quite a bit of a overhang here. So I'm going to link my handles together and drag this back, make it a little bit less extreme there, and then accept the result. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom side here. Blend surface, first edge, enter, second edge, enter. Adjust the handles. link my handles together and drag them back. And that's the first method for making a scoop. So if I select all of those surfaces and run the emap command, and I have the fluorescent tube environment map right now selected, you can see that we have continuity and we're blending out that edge of the scoop. Now you have a lot of different environment map options here and I think your default one will be arches. I like the brushed silver one or the fluorescent tube one personally. And one thing you want to check on here is selecting all the surfaces and joining them together and then running show edges you want to make sure that you don't have a gap right in here where each of the blend surfaces joined that adjacent split surface. If you do, you can use match surface with positional continuity and then do your join. So let me show you the other way to make this type of scoop or flare detail here. So I'm going to extract each of those and delete them. And I'll start with a lofted surface. And the loft options here, if you have them on do not simplify, the spacing of your isocurves, the spacing of your control point structure for the loft may not be perfectly even. If you use the rebuild option, you get a more even distribution of the control points. So I like to use the rebuild and you may need to up the control point count. I think for this shape on both edges, I think 10 control points is sufficient. And I have the style as normal. And I'll say OK to that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. It remembers my settings, so I'll just right click to accept those. And I'll select all these surfaces and run EMAP again so that we can take a look at it right now and we can see that break in continuity. We don't have a flow of that highlight across those sharp edges and if we use our fluorescent tube it's very apparent that we have that hard edge right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use match surface and the command is match SRF or this is the icon match surface and you can do multiple matches. So the only thing to consider when using multiple matches is that you'll only be able to pick one continuity type. So do all your curvature continuous matches at the same time and your positional match separate. So I'm going to click on multiple matches and do that. So that will be our first edge and it wants the segment to match and that will be that. So press enter and the next untrimmed edge and the segment to match and enter and that's the two that I'm going to use. This third one here will be a positional match that will be second and the match surface dialog comes up and we have our continuity and I'll use curvature and the preserve the other end I'll leave that as curvature. I'm going to refine the match and I'm also going to preserve the isocurve direction. So remember we rebuilt that lofted surface so that we had a really even distribution and it also made for nice straight ISO curves. I'm going to preserve that with that option. 
And what that has done is it has created a curvature continuous match across those two edges. Now I could join and see if I get a naked edge right here, but I'm going to use match surface one more time right across that edge. And I'm going to do it just as a positional match. And make sure you have match edges by closest points so that it doesn't deform it to the whole edge of that split surface. And that gives me a positional match right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. Multiple matches. And curvature continuity. And then one more match surf for position. Then I'll select all the surfaces and run the emap command. And we still have our fluorescent tube on. And you can see the blending out of that edge is a little different than the previous method. So you have these two different options. One thing to consider here is the back end after using match there, we can't really control the way that shape is. So we're going to trim that out with a curve. And now we have that straight edge. So if you know you're going to remove a little bit of material there, you don't really have to worry about not controlling the angle of the match surf. And remember, you can always adjust the analysis mesh to make it look a little bit smoother. You can see it's pretty coarse right now. So I'm going to show you the settings that I would use here. something like that. And now we have very smooth analysis mesh. And those are the two methods for modeling a scoop or if you look at it from the other side, a flare. Thanks for watching.